good reason why I should not kill you this instant. Because I'd kill you if you tried. Impossible. That would require mercy. Instead, you have made me a monster. We're both monsters, Barnabas. Just two big fish in an itty bitty pond. What does the idiom big fish in a small pond mean? And did you know that there's an opposite phrase for this term? Join us on our latest Cinefall episode to find out. And be sure to visit our Funday website for more. Dark Shadow is a 2012 epic gothic horror dark fantasy black comedy film based on the gothic television soap opera of the same name, starring Johnny Depp, Michelle Pfeiffer, Helen Boham Carter, and Eva Green. An imprisoned vampire, Barnabas Collins, is set free and returns to his ancestral home, where his dysfunctional descendants are in need of his protection. Let's see how it plays out. In 1760, Young Barnabas Collins and his wealthy family set sail from Liverpool to the New World, where they established the town of Collinport in Maine and construct Collinwood Mansion, their grand estate. Fifteen years later, Barnabas rejects the love of his servant, Angelique, who is secretly a witch. In response, she murders his parents using dark magic. Barnabas becomes obsessed with dark magic to prove his parents were murdered. Left alone, he later finds his one true love. Promise we'll be together forever. God is my witness, Joseph. I swear it. Jealous of their love, Angelique puts a spell on Gisette that caused her to jump to her death from a cliff. Barnabas witnesses this and throws himself after her, but survives. Cursed by Angelique to eternal suffering as a vampire. Angelique then turns the townspeople against him and gets him buried alive. In 1972, Victoria Winters, who bears an uncanny resemblance to Josette, travels to Collinwood to fill the position of governance. She's interviewed by the Collins matriarch, Elizabeth. Do you think the sexes should be equal? Heavens no. Men would become unmanageable. I think we'll get along just fine, Miss Winters. Vicky, please. Call me Vicky. Victoria is hired and meets Elizabeth's teenage daughter, Carolyn, Elizabeth's brother, Roger, and his young son, David, who believes he is being visited by his late mother's ghost, and a live-in alcoholic psychiatrist, Dr. Julia Huffman. That night, Victoria is visited by the ghost of Josette, who tells her he's coming. A construction crew unwittingly frees Barnabas from his tomb. He apologetically feeds on their blood and then makes his way to Collinwood, perplexed by the modern-day technology and fashion he encounters. At the Collinwood residence, Barnabas hypnotizes the caretaker into his service to gain access to the house. He then reveals his true identity to Elizabeth by taking her through a secret passage his father built. Family is the only real wealth, he would often remark. Though clearly, he was not opposed to other kinds. We've been sitting on top of a fortune all these years. Know this. I mean to stay. I mean to be a part of this family again. She agrees, but only on one condition that he promises to keep everything he's told her a secret. Elizabeth then introduce him to the family as a distant relative from England. Soon, Angelique, having survived through the centuries and now the owner of the dominant angel-based seafood, finds out about Barnabas' return and pays him a visit. Poor sweet Barnabas. Things have changed while you were taking your little nap. My angel bay is Collins Port now. So you are the one who has sent the Collins family business into the abyss. They love me here. I'm the only big fish left in their little pond. Barnabas realizes that it's hopeless to go against Angelique, but Elizabeth convinces him otherwise, 
Together, they begin to build and restore not just the Collinwood's family business, but also their mansion to its former glory. Dr. Hoffman learns of Barnabas' true nature and offers to turn him mortal again. They start by removing his blood and giving him transfusion of human blood. Angelique, witnessing the Collins' development, attempts to buy them out and confesses her love to Barnabas. He gives in to her, but later was remorseful and again rejects her. But I cannot succumb to your charms ever again. Please, forgive me. If I can't have you, my love, I'll destroy you. This is what we call a kongbu qingren. It's like they say, there is a thin line between love and hate. And if Angelique couldn't have Barnabas, it would seem that she would do anything to destroy him. Barnabas decides to throw a ball at Collinwood for the entire town. He finds Victoria alone, who reveals she's seen the ghost of Josette her entire life. Her parents committed her to an asylum as a result but she eventually escaped and Josette was the one who directed her to Collinwood. After Barnabas shares his affection, Victoria returns it and they kiss, to Angelique's dismay. More eager than ever to be human, Barnabas goes to Dr. Huffman's office, where he discovers her transfusing his blood into herself to try to stop her aging. He drains all the blood from her body and he and Willie then dump her at sea, telling everyone she went away on business. Barnabas then confronts the greedy Roger and offers him a choice to become a better father to David or to leave Collinwood with enough money to live out his life elsewhere. Roger chooses the latter. Heartbroken, David is nearly struck by the falling disco ball, but Barnabas saves him with supernatural speed and catches fire in the daylight, revealing himself as a vampire. David, Carolyn, and Victoria are all shocked. Desperate, Barnabas meets with Angelique, who goads him into confessing to his murders and demands he joins her. Either you agree to rule this little pawn of mine side by side, partners and lovers, or I put you back in the box. I have already prepared my counterproposal. It reads thusly. You may strategically place your wonderful lips upon my posterior and kiss it repeatedly. Angelique traps him in a coffin once again. She then destroys the Collins cannery and, with a recording of Barnabas's confession, rallied the town against the family. David frees Barnabas, who confronts Angelique at Collinwood. They battle, and the townspeople see that she is a witch. Elizabeth and Carolyn, who reveals herself to be a werewolf, join the fight. But Angelique enchants the house to turn against the Collins family. She finally admits to have caused all the tragedies in the Collins family, including the death of David's mother and Barnabas's parents. The ghost of David's mother then appears and incapacitates Angelique, and the family escapes the burning manor. You never wanted my love. You wanted to possess me. No. I love you, Barnabas. You cannot love Angelique. That is your curse. Angelique offers Barnabas her heart, which crumbles as she dies. Barnabas rages to the hill and finds Victoria, who says there is only one way for them to be together. When he refuses to turn her into a vampire, she steps off the cliff. He leaps after her, biting her neck on the way down, on the rocks. He holds her in his arms, and Victoria awakens a vampire. It is said that blood is thicker than water. It is what defines us, binds us, curses us. My name is Barnabas Collins, and my curse has finally been broken. At last, Barnabas gets to spend all eternity with his love, Victoria. Reviews for the film were mixed. Critics praise its visual style and consistent humor, but felt it lacked a focus or substantial plot and developed characters. What do you think? Did you enjoy the dark humor? 接下来我们来揭晓今天电影迷《黑影家族 Dark Shadow》要学什么 Time and time again, we hear the villain Angelique describe herself as the big fish in a small pond. 你知道这个俚语是什么意思吗? 
Think of this expression in a literal sense. 当有人说你是一条大鱼在一个小池里，就是在描述一个小地区或是特定社群当中你是一个大人物。换句话说，你对你身处的小环境当中的人来说很重要。For example, a small town mayor has a lot of influence on his town, but if he went to a big city, no one would recognize him. He is a big fish in a small pond. 一个小镇的市长在他的镇上有很大的影响力，但是如果他去大城市，没有人会认得他。那这句的相反是 a little fish in a big pond。小鱼比喻为一个较不重要的人，他试图在他的大池中找一个位置。At the end of the day, no matter if you are a big fish or a small fish, it matters more what we do with what we are given. Hope you have learned something useful in this episode of Cinefall. You can find more on the Fun Day website. Let's make every day a fun day. Mind if I tag along? Nothing would make me happier. You come down for a stroll. Actually, I came down looking for David. God knows where he's run off to now. We'll be lucky if we see him before Christmas. He's a fine lad.